Witnesses say the, uh, the ISIS flag now flies over Ambar province headquarters in Ramadi, just west of Baghdad. Uh, fighting has raged since late Thursday when the militants struck with a wave of suicide bomb attacks. Well, let's get the latest with Nick Peyton Walsh. He's following developments from Beirut in Lebanon. Nick, uh, just give us a sense of what is happening on the ground now. What are we hearing? Uh, as we understand at the moment, coalition warplanes and uh, Iraqi military helicopters seem to have joined the fight to try and retain as much of the city of Ramadi as the Iraqi government can. Now, this substantial assault began at early hours of the morning with 13, we're told, separate suicide bomb attacks. Now, some of these, two of these, seem to have allowed ISIS to sort of pummel away into the city centre, using bulldozers, in fact, to remove some of the concrete walls that have been put in place to block any such bid. Now, they've moved into the city centre, taking the provincial headquarters, you mentioned, a police headquarters too, and also a key mosque there as well. Many locals fleeing, obviously, for their lives there, many of them terrified. We've seen in the past how ISIS have uh, executed pro-government uh, civilians in areas they take over, and, of course, Iraqi security forces doing what they can to try and hold on to parts of that city. Robin, this is of course, a big deal, ISIS uh, sweeping into a population centre like this on any day, but it's so much more significant because it runs totally against the narrative that Baghdad's government had been trying to push. They wanted, after taking Tikrit in the north, not to focus on Mosul, the other ISIS stronghold there, but in fact switch gears and focus on Anbar, of which Ramadi is the provincial capital. They had been hoping to push ISIS out. Instead, it's ISIS who are on the front foot and potentially taking this vital city uh, from the Iraqi government. The fight's still underway, Robin. Indeed, the fight's still underway, so this battle could go on for a while. It could do, and obviously in urban centres like this, things are extraordinarily complex. But the issue here is how much tenacity do the Iraqi security forces have? We've seen in the past how they melt away, how they pull back, how they do not stand and fight. We don't quite know what's happened here, but certainly a swift ISIS advance like this would suggest that either the Iraqi security forces there have lacked the equipment they need to do their job or haven't done it. Robin? And uh, a few weeks ago, our Damon and, and our CNN team filmed residents of Ramadi leaving. This was weeks ago. Do we know how many civilians remain in Ramadi, what, what the situation is w with them? Hard to get a clear number, but of course, when you see violence like this, the first instinct people have who've stuck it out there, who are uh, frankly have been willing to resist until the end or hold on to their livelihoods until the end, the first instinct seems to be when you see something like this happening, of course, to leave. So that will, could be vital. Uh, one of the key things, in fact, we heard in the message from ISIS's leader, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, released just yesterday, was uh, significant references to Anbar. We just have to see quite how this plays out, Robin.